Welcome to Feature Friday. This is the series where we like to dive into some of the coolest features inside of Ecamm Live. We like to show you these features individually so that we can make sure that your Ecamm experience is the absolute bomb. Today, we are going to go through preferences. Yes, preferences. Now, they're designed so that you can set things up the way you want it, but I'm going to give you a really quick precursory run through so that way you can look at them and sort of know what they mean. Whenever I pick any Mac program, when I download it and I install it, one of the first things I do is go through preferences to make sure that I can set it up the way that I would like, even if I'm not sure what they do. I also find it's a really handy way to learn what the program does. I tend to go to preferences first because sometimes just digging into preferences alone will show you some of the cool features that the app has because you have to set settings in order to use those features. So let's dive into preferences and we'll show you how it's done. As you can see, my preference window is open. If I go into live demo mode, it's already open, but by toggling this little switch here that open and closes preferences, if I were to close the preference window and again hit command comma, that also opens up the preferences. And over here in the menu, you can come down to where it says preferences. So now we have that, let's dive back out of demo mode and walk you through some of the preferences in the preference window. Here we are looking at the preference window. I am going to comb through each tab and give you an idea of what the different settings do. The first one is kind of a cool one. It allows you to play all the apps sounds. I tend to leave this off because when people make comments, your machine is constantly going bloop, 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 and you sound like a dying guppy. So I turn it off, but a lot of people leave it on so they can hear when a comment comes in to pay attention. That's really a personal choice. It doesn't really affect your show. It's kind of up to you. The next one is show animated reactions. Now you'll see that when I'm in demo mode, my comment window was empty. I don't have a live show right now, so I can't show you. But what that means is when you get a comment and someone presses the like button or sends a heart in Facebook, it will actually bloom on your screen and it's for you to see. It doesn't really affect your broadcast, but it's just to let you know that your audience is engaged. Let's check out show program window while other apps are open. The program window allows you to see what's going on with your stream as far as what the world can see. If you leave this window open and you switch to another app with this setting, it won't let that window disappear. That's very helpful so that way you can make sure when you do a screen share that the people are seeing what you are intending to show. Keep utility windows in front while you're alive. If we go into live demo mode here, you see these little floaty utility windows. This will make sure that when you are live, these never disappear or get hidden by other apps. When using our preview feature, this next setting will make sure that it either asks you every time when you try to go back to live mode, or you can set it to publish or revert changes. So this really affects how you use preview mode. We have a whole entire feature Friday on preview mode. That's the video to check out to learn more. This is one of my favorite settings is automatically high comments after 15 seconds. You can set it to five, you can set it to 10, but this allows me to put a comment on screen, read the comment, gives me enough time to answer that comment, but I don't have to sweat remembering to remove it because it automatically just poof disappear. So I like to set mine at around 15 seconds. Some people use 20. Your mileage may vary, so you're going to have to adjust accordingly. And then the last one is show the Skype active speaker camera. I barely use Skype interviews, so I leave that off. But what that's for is when you're using Skype to bring in an interview and the person is talking, the camera will switch to that independent person. So that's all there is there. Of course, you see your check for update button here and how to choose your record folder. That covers tab one. Here in our second tab is super simple. It allows you to log into your account and manage your billing. Sometimes if you have some weird things going on, it will be important to press log out and then log back in. And that will allow you to say, refresh the way Ecamm is reading your account. Jumping over to the stream tab, this is where you select your stream size. For most of you, you're probably going to set 1080p. I tend to stream in 4K. Don't at me, bro. <laughs> the next setting is stream shape because Ecamm gives you options. It allows you to record your standard 16 by 9 like we're doing now, square, say Instagram video, 
classic 4x3, say like older glass TV, doink, doink, doink. it allows you to do extra wide, which is the little letter box, you know, with the black bars on the top and bottom, say like Blockbuster. Hey, Katie. And it also allows you to do tall, which is great for those of you guys doing YouTube shorts, Instagram reels, or TikTok. Very neat feature. Let's get back to preferences. Next, we have our frame rate. Now, I have mine set for 24p. The majority of you will probably use 30. If you really want extra high quality, you can go to 60. Uh, 60 requires a little bit more bandwidth, so you gotta make sure that your machine power and your bandwidth can handle 60. So use 60 with caution. It's beautiful, but you have to make sure your machine and your internet account can handle that. Now, we have high quality video mode. I pretty much always leave this check. Again, that's up to you. You know your bandwidth. You'll figure it out if you're dropping frames or getting kind of glitchy. Same thing with high quality audio mode. That adjusts the way your sound is being sent and recorded. So you kind of want to, again, depends on your machine capabilities. Most of us are now using M1s or something similar. So yeah, if you have both of those checks, you're normally okay. And then the last one is your recording format because it allows you to pick for MOV or MP4. Next is your video tab. It allows you to select things like your default source mode. You guys know me, I tell you all the time, I like to set my default to blank. What that means is if I come here, my screen will always start like this instead of with the picture. I think it's easier to build your screens. Pro tip. Next, you can get into how you wanna do your transitions. We have cross dissolve, we have white flash, we have swipe, cross zoom, light rays, ripple, and Ken's favorite, copy machine. Let's take a quick peek at copy machine. Yay, Ken. <laughs> Go into each one of these, try what you like, even set it up for no transition, which looks a little something like this. Uh, I tend to use cross dissolves to give it a little subtle, right? But you can try whatever you want. Go down the list, try them all, pick the ones you want to pick. Don't pick copy machine. Sorry, Ken. <laughs> Next one is fade out when finished. When you end your stream, it does a nice fade on the television. And then you can auto play video files. I actually tend to leave this off because sometimes I want to load the video and press play myself. But if you do have this on, whenever you highlight a scene that has a video in it, it will automatically play the video. Uh, show picture and picture above overlays. If you have a problem finding your picture and picture, this is the guy you want to check. Show picture and picture and new video files in screen sharing sources. Again, this will sort of help you decide whenever you're doing a screen share, if you automatically put a little pip in the bottom, kind of like my bubble over here. This is a camera overlay though. That's different. Show NDI and siphon titles full screen. I tend to leave that checked, but I don't do my titles through NDI, so I just have it checked. <laughs> also, disable the built-in camera. This is one of my favorite because my iMac is at a slant, and if I go to select the wrong camera, my iMac will just show you all of the mess that I have in my shelf next to me that you guys think is full of nice, beautiful Star Wars characters is actually kind of a hot mess in there. So by turning that camera off, you never accidentally let your built-in camera come on. I always leave that guy disabled. Next, we jump over to the audio tab. This allows you to select where your sound's gonna come out. I like to send my sound back through the interface because it requires you to use headphones. Most of you folks who are having problems with echo, this is it. I never let my speakers be set for my iMac. I don't want my computer to make a peep because that will come right back into the microphone and then you'll hear here, doc, 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 rock, 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 talk, 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 talking to you through the whole show, 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 show. Drives me batty. So I like to send my speakers back to the sound interface, in this case, the Rodecaster Pro. If I was using my Scarlett, I'd send it back to Scarlett. Whichever you're using, I like to send the speakers back to that because that way I have no choice but to listen to it through headphones and I don't have to worry about any echo, 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 echo. Next, you have echo cancellation, which comes in handy if you are using your speakers. 
ECAM will let you know, it'll put a little triangle on your sound system to let you know that you it, the mic can basically hear what ECAM is saying. So if you see that, you know to come over here and turn on echo cancellation. Now, broadcast system audio, so whenever you're using a screen share, if you wanna show something on the screen, what this will allow you to do is say like, play something from Chrome and have that sound feed back in the Ecamm and come out in your recording or your broadcast. So that's what that means. Whenever you wanna be sure that something in your system can be heard by Ecamm, be it Chrome tab, be it iTunes and some things like that. You say you have another video you wanna play and you want it to be playing outside of Ecamm but come back into it so that your stream people can hear it. This is the selection that you wanna check. We must warn you, do not play iTunes music that is not royalty free and able to be played on things like Facebook and YouTube because you will get your account banned, deleted, copyright strikes. It's a mess. So epidemic sound or something of that nature will be your friend. Let's go back and check out automatically mute microphones and and guest audio during video playback. This is cool. This is our work around for the talkback feature. If you're playing a movie in your show and you wanna be able to hear your guest, if you mute yourself and the interview, you guys can have a back channel speak while the video is playing. Is everything okay? You wanna grab a water, something of that nature. You can have these conversations. If you leave this checked, every time you play something that has a movie clip in it, it will automatically mute you and the guest and then you guys can begin your back channel talk so it's kind of a neat feature mic delay this comes in handy for those of us using cam links and other capture cards you you might have a thing where your drift is starting to come where you're speaking and the audio catches up after like you can see your lip moving and then the sound come later this is your delay i have mine set for four seems to be the default answer for cam links and sony cameras but again your mileage may vary depending on myriad things cabling uh how it's plugged to the machine when your cam link was made, uh, the moon is in retrograde, like all myriad things. So you will have to play with this to figure it out. But this is how you adjust the delay when your video and your lips don't sync and you look like a bad dub movie. This is how you fix it. Now, map input channels one and two to left and right stereo. Uh, this is kind of cool because certain interfaces will send out a mono signal by leaving this on. You're kind of making sure you're getting a pseudo story, a stereo. It's not really stereo, it's a dual mono, but it sounds better. If for some reason this doesn't work for you and you are post-producing, just take the audio track and duplicate it in your software. You'll get the same effect. Next, we have mute movie sound on speakers. Yes, because I don't want my movie sounds to come out. I am normally wearing headphones. Again, this is up to you. I tend to leave it alone. And then also record isolated audio tracks. I'm gonna like this feature because you can watch the feature Friday from last week and you can see exactly how to use isolated audio tracks. Okay, let's dive into interview mode. This is a biggie. Get your pen and paper out, get comfortable, grab a beverage. This is the guy. Play the ring chime. This is basically the doorbell. When it goes, hello, that's all that is. Automatically answer guests. I never do that just in case any weirdos call me. Send the guests to the green room. Yes, because what that does is make sure that when you answer the phone, they just don't pop up on the screen. It will give you an opportunity to announce your guests to your audience. Now, turn off audio processing for guests. I normally have this on. I recently turned it off today because I was trying to talk to a person who wasn't wearing headphones. The one thing to know about this feature, if you try to change it when the guest is already dialed in, they will get booted from the call and they will have to call back in. So make sure you let the guests know. So I had a guest that was on that didn't have on headphones. I can kind of hear myself from his laptop coming back into his mic on his laptop. And then that was coming into the stream to me. So again, every time I'd say, hello, hello, hello. Hey, 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 can you hear me? Hear me? Hear me? Yeah, it was driving me nuts. So I said, give me a second. I want to change the setting. It's going to temporarily boot you out, but call me right back in three seconds and everything will be gravy. I came over to the scene here. I popped this checkbox off and then he called right back. Everything was everything. I personally leave this on because 
if it doesn't do all of that weird audio processing and things, it tends to make for better natural recordings that gives me the opportunity to adjust it after the fact in a program like Audition, Logic, Reaper, Audacity, uh, whatever you want to use. Not Audacity. I'm joking. Okay, guest web interface to dark mode. I like this. I'll tell you why I like to use this mode. I like to use dark mode on guests because here, I'll show you something real quick. I'll pop open a browser window and then go to a page that's relatively bright like Amazon. Take a look at my face. See, my face just changed. So I like to leave it on dark mode because that way when the browser is open, the person's face isn't changing as I change scenes. Let's show you again. See how my face has changed, especially if they don't have a really good camera where your ISO is locked off and it's not like attempting to do that auto adjustment for light. My camera is locked off on manual. It doesn't change too much, but that changes enough to drive you crazy. So I tend to leave that off. I like dark mode. That way you're not getting white pages that messes everything up. Guess web interface displays, comments and viewer accounts. Some people like to turn this off so the guest isn't distracted. I like to leave this on because my guests can help me see a comment if I miss something fantastic that one of you awesome people say. So I like to leave it on. It also lets them know how they're doing to me. It lets them know how they're doing because they can read the comments. Again, it's a cool feature because you can turn it on and off accordingly. I personally tend to leave it on. Now, lower the music and movie sounds for guests when you're in off-air audio. What, again, that means is if I mute my microphone input in the sound panel, let me do this, hold on one second. So over here, if I mute the interview sound and mute my it will put in off-air audio mode. And again, that would allow me and my guests to talk. If I have this box checked, it ducks the audio a little bit for us so that we can hear each other better, but the people on the stream, it won't change the audio level in your stream. I find this to be very handy, but that is a good look here. And the last one is in the guest view. Do you want them to see the camera or you want them to see what's going on in the broadcast? I'd like to let them see what's going on in the broadcast. That is completely up to you. But if you do this, they're just gonna see each other's camera. If you go to this, then they're gonna see whatever you're streaming out to the world. Let's jump over to screen sharing. Include desktop icons. Even though my desktop is absolutely empty, like I don't like icons on my desktop, I still leave this checked off. Just in case you know, you're know screen capturing or you're doing things and they land on your desktop or you download something on the fly. I, I don't like messy desktops, call me a weirdo. I like my desktop to be pristine. Plus they give you lovely background pictures with Apple or I add my own. It's just a weirdo thing, that's up to you. It doesn't really affect performance much. Same with including the desktop picture. If I turn this off, you'll notice it goes black. If I turn this on, you can see the lovely Big Sur background. It's completely up to you. When you're doing something, say, with a branded desktop picture, it's kind of cool because you can have your brand back there. Um, add margin when zooming into app windows. That's this, so there's a little bit of buffer so that it looks a little cuter. I think I like margins, negative space, graphic designer, leftover skills. That's what that is. Optimize for better quality or higher frame rate. So what this means when you're streaming and you're showing something on your screen, if you get any weird jittery or flickiness that's coming from the other app, say trying to refresh and show itself properly on your screen, you can make adjustments to this in order to make some of that go away and try to mitigate it. I always leave mine on better quality, but if you have a slower machine, you would slide it over to better frame rate. Now, include mouse cursor. Well, you just saw that. As I move this, the mouse cursor does the thing. You know what I mean? And here, I'll show you, you can adjust the mouse cursor size to like normal or big. I normally leave mine about a smidgen, about right here, because I think that's just good enough. And then show the mouse clicks. It comes from whenever I click the thing, the little circle shows up. So I like to show the mouse clicks and show everything when sharing. If I check this, it might get a little funny, but what that normally does is it shows everything in the background, like extra screens, like side picture icons, all of that. Again, I like to leave that off. The next one here is Facebook. 
This is where you show your title field. So if I go to set up a stream for Facebook, it gives me a place to type in the title and description, allows me to do disallow embedding. I don't care what you do with my videos. You don't have to, but if you're doing something paid or something where you got to kind of protect some intellectual property or some secret squirrel like skunk works type stuff, make sure you leave that off. It's just, I mean, leave, put that on, sorry. And then for your business page, it allows you to select a business page. As you can see, I manage lots of pages. And if I do it to here, will it also cross post to my podcast page? The rest of this is technical Facebook ad stuff. I don't mess with it. Not my Kuliana. But if you need help, by all means, send us an email and maybe we can point you in the right direction of someone who can assist you. Then we go over to the LinkedIn tab. Just say where you're coming from. I'm coming from the West Coast. I'm actually coming from the way out West Coast. Aloha. <laughs> and then finally, we jump over to the YouTube tab. Now, this is important, folks. Pay attention right here. Pick your category. I pick entertainment, although my jokes aren't that funny. I still pick entertainment. Just make myself feel good. <laughs> and then here... Where you select your latency. Now, I use low latency, which for me averages to be about, let's say, five to 10 seconds later. If I say, hey, type a comment now, five to 10 seconds later, that comment will pop up. If I go to ultra low latency and I say, hey, type a comment now, it takes about two to three seconds, a little under five. And then if you put it at normal latency, and I'll say, Minasan, comment on Kaite Mas. Then they write the comment. It'll take, mm, I want to say somewhere between 10 to 20 seconds. So it again depends on your bandwidth, but you do have to remember if you select ultra low latency, you're not going to want to stream over 1080 because YouTube will get extremely angry because you'd have to have an incredibly powerful computer with a bulletproof internet. And so, yeah, normally the best spot I find personally is at low latency, but there are some situations where how fast your people can comment have a lot to do with how you're running the show. Say you're running trivia night. If you're running trivia night, drop your stream down to 1080, maybe even drop your stream down to 720 and then use ultra low latency and you won't have people say, hey, I put in my comment and I didn't get the question in fast enough. So yeah, that's what that is. And then if you are making any content that is children appropriate, you are going to want to press this made for kids. It's very important. If you don't, YouTube will get extremely mad at you. So don't do it. Just make sure if you make content for kids, you have to check that box. If not, leave it off. Make your life much, much better. That is a really, really super fast, world-class run through preferences. If you have questions about any of those preferences specifically, preferences specifically, write that down in the comments below and we will come back and make sure we get you an answer. If there's something that we can't answer, we'll feed you to the support team and make sure that you are covered. We really want to make sure that your eCam experience is the best that it can be. So by all means, any questions whatsoever, make sure you drop them below. This has been another Feature Friday. Again, I am Doc Rock, your community manager. If you have a feature you want to see us talk about or you have any questions, drop that down in the comments below as well if you know someone that needs to see this video make sure you share it so that they can get their preference they can get their preferences preferences preferenced so they can get their preference preferenced i hope you enjoyed this video now watch the video that's coming up on screen next